Yehovah Malak, Olam Olam, Yehovah Malak, Yame Rakis, Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Theos, Yehovah Erdanai, Yehovah Elohim, Kurios Theos Pantakreta, Kurios Theos Pistos, Elda at Yehovah, Yel Emuna Yehovah, Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta, Basilios, Basilion, Kai Kurios, Kurion, Yehovah Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Yehovah Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion ni mahagion pentakreta gadol gadol gebura Yehova ishmal kam Yehova shamma el nakum Yehova el nakum yapa natsak israel la sheker gava gava triambos Yehova Jesus Christos Pantakreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura, Zaan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa Pantakreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Derek Emunabakar Meshfat Shaba The Megalogai of Yahweh Elion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, understanding every breath of our life to be redeemed in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost, who controls us, leads us, guides us to realize and to understand the one who sitteth upon the judgment throne, constantly proclaimed to be holy, 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 calls in to look upon him and make the people who are walking in truth are his true associates. Looking upon such great king who sits over the judgment seat demands in our life that we as true believers in Christ to be associated with him as he said, those who walk with me are white. They are the men who are carrying in their bosom all the time the truth. We need to learn in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, everything that which is the truth and make up our life to depend upon. The standards, nothing but the truth. Yet in this church age, much of the people who have failed to learn the word of the Lord of God, 
and be associated with truth, they have not understood the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to teach us that He alone is the one who is capable of teaching the truth. So, dear brethren, as the passage goes on to learn for us, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when they have made their life to absolutely lie. In Acts chapter 5, we look, Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back that part of the prize of the land? And the point over here, as we were looking yesterday, in order to have anything on this earth, first of all, you need to pay the price. Much more than that, we can understand the price which the people are not paying at the cost of discipleship, and they're letting go the standards of the great eternal life. The price which they have to pay, the things as the days, as the day go on to progress, we know very well, the better we have to become. The greater the day, or in the sense, we put on day by day maturity in the word of the Lord of God. We have to set aside the paths of the old sin nature, because with God the Father, the one who sits on the judgment seat of Christ, He is nothing but the truth. Keeping this in the viewpoint of life, the people that get associated with Him, are nothing but the men who are truth. So day by day, as we progress to maturity, from milk to bread, from bread to strong meat, we come to understand that we have been given the purpose of the life to get along into the standards of nothing but greater truth. The old sin nature activities, as we know very well, if you are loving to touch it, you are going to taste it and you are going to handle it. So better not to touch. Our ways are the highway of holiness. Our ways are to walk in the path of great virtue life rather than living a life in the standards of the old sin nature. So the prize, what we need to pay day by day, is to put to death the activities of the old sin nature. No matter whatever may be the things on this earth, the sooner the better we come back to the realization that it is nothing but the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who can lead us, guide us, mentor us, nothing but into the standards of His great truth. So, dear brethren, using the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. Let's come back and learn what God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date. In every past to understand, the price which He has paid for us is absolutely priceless. The price which we need to pay for Him by putting to death the life which cannot match in the divine presence of God the Father, who sits there to church, who looks nothing but for us to have the truth to be reflected. The great book of Book of Revolution, when we read, the people who are going to stay with him are the men who can understand or who can realize that we don't have anything else but the truth to be reflected, the truth to be lived, and the truth to be exemplified. So, dear brethren, using the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound, Let's come back and learn the mind of Christ, what He has prepared and kept for us on today's date in the past, to the praise of His glory in His matchless and marvelous grace. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of the Lord to learn the Word, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in the past, to the praise of Your glory. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born in the Spirit. 
He made his life in the spirit. He set forth a pattern for us. We have to be all the days of this life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, breath by breath. He has given us everything to be done or shown the pattern that we need to execute nothing but in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Here in the book of Acts chapter 5, we read, Peter reveals the deity of the Holy Spirit when he said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? You have not lied unto men, but unto God. So here it is very clear that the Holy Spirit is God, who is co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent with the Father and with the Son. So here, when we look, lying to Lord God the Holy Ghost is as good as living a life like the way how when Saul rejected Lord God, or in the sense of his rebellion towards to fear or tremble at his word, he was being in the standards of the evil spirit. But when we come back to Paul, but when we come back to King David, the one who has been anointed or chosen by the Lord, he was all the time growing wiser and wiser than all the servants of Saul. And though the charge of his Philistine realm called for his first love, his wife, asking hundred foreskins, he bought two hundred foreskins. And in that, as we are obeying, or we are paying the price to obey and to honor the Lord God's word, the greater Lord God is going to be with us and the greater the things pertaining to his work will be absolutely made plain and straight. The logic over here is very, very simple. We look into this life of David and Saul, because the work, what he has called for us, when you are not in the Holy Spirit, or when you are not living a life of truth, or when you're not paying the price, the price is what we call every day carrying your cross and following my Christ. Every day making up according to the standards or to the demands of the word of truth. The price is very, very simple if you would give every day. But you don't come to give every day. Therefore, you're walking in the rebellion character like Saul. And when Lord God has rejected you, or when you have been out of the control of the Lord, evil spirit from the Lord, in the case of Saul, as we look, evil spirit from the Lord comes to trouble you. And now, in that great song, when they sing, if Saul killed thousand, and David killed ten thousand, and now Saul is preparing in his heart to kill David. And the point what we learn over here is very, very simple. When you fail to obey the word of the Lord of God, you love to destroy the things which have been appointed by the Lord of God. That's what Saul is working out now with the life of King David. The things what the Lord God has appointed, he wanted to destroy him. But the greater Saul wanted to destroy him, the greater Lord God was with David to prove that those who obey the word of the Lord or love the word of the Lord of a God above anything else, those who have that integrity in fearing and trembling for the word of the Lord of a God, the Lord God is with them. And that's a very clear point. If you love to obey the word of the Lord of a God and follow the pattern of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and go to fulfill the great commission of my Lord by making up to enlighten your spiritual eyes to understand that when we are producing fruit, whatsoever we ask, God the Father would provide for us as we read that in John chapter 15 in verse number 16. It further emphasizes and teaches to us the point very, very clear. The greater we spend our time 
in search or in honor of getting greater fruit to Lord God because He has chosen us. We haven't chosen Him. The greater God the Father would fulfill your desire, says Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So what would be the desire for you? Our desire is nothing but to make the earth to be filled with the glory of the Lord as long as we live. The greater we love to read the word of Lord God with proper analysis and exegesis by meditating on it, the greater we would reflect it, the greater we understand the great desire which wherewith he said, whatsoever you ask, the Father will fulfill it. The greater our desire would be to make the name of my Lord God because already we know very well he is the only one who reigneth forever and forever and we learn very well that the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the ocean on this earth. So in these days of apostasies, where the truth of the word of Lord God is not been accurately expounded, so we have to be having only one thing or whatsoever the desire we have, as the word says there in John 15, 16, the only desire is to have the greater glory of God on this earth to be reflected through our lives. And that's what the principle we learn in the life of King David over Saul. The greater he tried to attack him because the evil spirit troubled him. And now the song of that woman, what they sang, if Saul killed thousand and David killed ten thousand, it caused in him jealousy. And the greater he was in the standards of that jealousy, greater we look his planning to execute or to put to death. The greater he tried to put to death David, the greater Lord delivered him. And that's the illustration what I told you about the Philistine for his first love or the first one, Milka, where she really loved him a lot. And he said, I have bought you with my prize, the prize of 200 foreskins of the Philistines. So the greater David was being there in the affairs of Saul, he tried to murder him, he tried to execute him. But the greater fear fell upon Saul. You know why? Because Lord God is with David. And here we are talking the same rebellion character of Satan comparing to Saul now. The man who has been tasting or known being the anointed cherub of the Lord having the proud in it and the pride in it, a rebelled against my Lord. And now he tries to destroy the anointed ones of the Lord, like the way how King David has been anointed. The only thing is, like Saul, Satan rebelled and disobeyed the word of the Lord. Like David, we have to obey and honor the word of the Lord, particularly in the great battle of 1 Samuel chapter 17 between Goliath and David. Who is he that being an uncircumcised Philistine trying to defile the name of my Lord? And that's the great thing which God the Father looked into him. Anyone who would love to stand for truth, as we read Second Chronicles 16.9, the will of God the Father is to strengthen on behalf of them whose hearts are loyal unto Lord God. That's what he did. The same thing, the great grace tasted by the Lord, Satan now, being rebellion in character, falls for sin. And now it tries to destroy every believer like the way how Saul persecuted David. But in each and everything, we have to know that the desire of God the Father, when he said he's going to fulfill whatsoever we ask, now, our desire should be the desire of God the Father. Our will should be the will of God the Father. Because we don't have any other desire or will apart from the happiness of God the Father to be fulfilled by looking in our lives when we are reflecting Christ. When we are executing the plan of God. When we are fulfilling the great commission of the Lord. When we are being to understand to be loyal to the word of the Lord. That's the only one character he requires. Therefore, in order to form the character in you or the things pertaining to Lord God, in you he has given Lord God the Holy Ghost. 
and the greater we have been under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, the greater we have a life that would please Lord God, the Father. So how do we get back to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost? We have to be made known first in the case of the prize which Christ our Lord our God being incarnated in the flesh through the Spirit teaches to us every breath. He was born in the Spirit, he walked in the Spirit, he lived in the Spirit, he executed his work under the control and mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit so that he could teach to us the pattern or the role model what every believer being born of Christ or the having sperm of Christ could be led or could be made known that the pattern of our life completely depends upon the Holy Spirit. So we have been told to be born again until and unless a man who has been born in spirit and in water or the truth, he cannot see God. And we have been told in Romans 8, these are the sons of God. They have been led by the Spirit of God. And the word sons over there is called to be huyos, adult sons in Christ. And what they have done to be the adult sons of Christ, justified in Christ by faith alone in Christ alone, being born as disciples in the word of the Lord our God, our primary work is to get better every day as the day goes on to produce. So we have to be better day by day. We have to grow up. It is not that we shall still go back, but we have to be day by day in the process of becoming better. Up to what extent? Not just some moral standards, but Christianity has been called for virtue, which is far high greater than morality. Therefore, we have left the path of the old sin nature, the path of the ways which are leading to death, and we are looking now the path of life which is leading to absolute eternity. Because the one who sits upon the judgment seat is truth. Therefore, we have been told repeatedly, God is truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the great passage, what we find for us over there in the book of Revolution, it emphasizes several times in the last few verses of chapter 22, particularly beginning with verse number 14. The people who could be with my Lord, the people who can be residing with my Lord, he says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, the Greek word called to be Makarian, followed by Poao. Independent existence, you don't have any happiness in the realm of having something to be getting on this earth, then only you're happy. No, a Makarian believer is independent of the world, though he's in the world. He doesn't go to have the things to touch and to get himself tasted him and get himself to be handled by the world. So he says far away. The same thing when we are under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. We cannot touch the world because loving the world or living in the world, as he says, in the sense not just having to live your life, but living in the sense giving your priorities for the details of life. So loving and living in the world will not qualify you. So he says, touch not the world, be dead to the world, because loving the world and living in the world is as good as called to be my cars and my killer standards of life. And this my cars or my killer standards of life, what you're having is absolutely enmity with God. Anyone who loves the world, the love of God the Father is not in them. That's very, very simple logic. So he says, blessed are the one who do his commandments, or who wash the robes. As people may think of Matthew 22, and a lot many commentators may write about the point on that, particularly verses 8 through 14. But we know very well, our conscience knows very well. If we are not walking in the integrity of truth, if we are not fulfilling the mandates or the demands of the word of the Lord of God, 
and try to do or to think that we can do get into heaven he says no what the word says that's the ultimate so the sooner the better it is for you to learn and to know your life in the viewpoint of the divine doctrine not the doctrine of human doctrine because we call human doctrine as the people who are talking according to the imaginations of their heart but not what exactly is the mouth of the lord of a god we have to be thus said the lord what is there for us in the pictographical representation of the hebrew greek and aramaic go back and teach that expound the truth because today the problem that is happening for us is that the men are not able to wash their clothes according to the mandates of the word of the lord and get well prepared to appear in the wedding invitation of the lord no matter however they may slice to misguide you or mislead you the word of lord god is so clear as it emphasizes for us that all the imaginations motives intentions of your thoughts god the father has all the facts therefore when he calls in atiros saying friend wear your garments he is speechless he cannot give any answer people may call it is a detached statement or people may call they might have not had the time to wear the wedding garments you know the anxieties and the cares of this life being indifference towards bible doctrine though the word of lord god says come every day carry your cross follow my christ do the will of god the father the way how they have treated or respected the word or ill treated the word or become careless to the word your all motives imaginations have been found there therefore you will be speechless you cannot be the man to say i have this reason or i will have that reason but he says you will be speechless you don't have any reason to talk now because all things will fade off and the only exception for you tying up your hands and legs the first thing because you did not walk according to the will of god the hands what we look is very very simple because you haven't used your hands to become like the scribes as the word of lord god demands by growing up into gramati as joining as disciples so what are your hands doing on this earth if your hands have not known it has been given to write the word of the lord of a god and you might be having many problems and many reasons to say we haven't been educated we do not know how to write but god the father in his grace has provided to understand reading and writing as william carey comes in the 17th century to my country india or 18th century almost all the first thing he wanted to start a school and he started a school before he could go back and start a university of sarampur one why because he knew the value every passive teacher what he has upon his shoulders the serious responsibility not just ritual things what the people they allowed to carry weekly ones the hebrew word sharat which is used for minister as this morons can't understand that word ministering unto the lord is a very very serious responsibility so what they do they come to teach to the entire world from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 so when these people don't understand it at least when they have learned to read or when they have learned to write they could be pure from the blood which could be upon their own head they could teach to you and they would say write the word of god become a scribe grow up into gramati as such is the kingdom of god matthew 13:52 and such is the standard what we have for us in Matthew 28:18 through 20 given a great commission in making disciples of all the nations so that we could be pure from the blood which could be upon your own head and why it could be pure from the blood because we are been called to completely give the entire counsel of god and the price for the pastor teacher temporary sacrifice of this life 
That's the great commission what has been given for the pastor teacher. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Without giving your time to the word of Lord God, you cannot teach. And that's the great problem what we're able to find in our pulpits today. So in the book of Revelation chapter 22, he emphasizes for us, in verse 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, and they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates of the city. And then he claims, without dogs, sorcerers, warmongers, murderers, idolaters, and the last clause, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. This is the great problem for us. People are not able to understand. Whosoever maketh and loveth a lie, sudas. And the word is very, very clear. Whosoever maketh and loveth a lie. And before the presence of God the Father, when we look upon that great judgment seat of the Lord, the thing that which will be really made known to understand, with Him is truth. As He said, John 14, 6. And no matter however these morons would love to say, in that time He was the truth, in the time of Adam, he was the truth, and in such and such time, you will be the truth. Like the critics who talk about the Bible, because Satan with cunning fables, the way how Saul designed many schemes, like the plan of being snuffed off by the Gentiles through the Philistines, asking him to get such sort of foreskins. You know, all the plans, what, Dave, what Saul tried to have an attack against David. So in the same manner, you will be having many attacks by such critics who say such and such, by so many great many expositors being in the great theological colleges of the Hebrew school of thought, comparing them with the historical trends of this pagan realm and say that such and such will be the thought line, such and such will be the standards of thinking, because there are many great commentaries who have been come up with such a way. So all this men, they may try to take you out from the truth. They may try to lead you out from the truth. But yet we find that Lord God, if he is with you, who can be against you? The same example of King David. The greater the attack by Satan or by Saul upon David, the greater Lord God was with him, the greater he was being delivered the greater he was been still going on to perform the things of the demands of God the Father's will. And now coming for us, the greater the attack upon you, Satan cannot even touch you because you know why? Christ our Lord our God prayed for us in John chapter 17. And then in that John chapter 17, when we look upon this great marvelous verse, really it has to be a the answer for us why we have been still not attacked by Satan. The greater the Saul tried to attack David, the greater he was being delivered because he was the one after Lord God's own heart, fulfilling the will of God the Father. The same thing over here, this great prayer in John chapter 17, saying that, that as he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son and the Son also may glorify thee. And then as he prays, he says that, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are thine. And all are mine are thine, and all thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, Keep through thy own name those whom you have given me. The word keep ta'ari'o, to God. And that's the great thing what today people are not able to understand. Though Saul tried to snuff off David, when God was with him to guard him, to protect him, and to make upon the son of, greater son of David, as we look upon Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the way they say, 
the same thing he tries to emphasize still more saying that as he guarded as he prayed so he shall guard us and the word what we look for keep is called over here as tereo t e r e o and that meant to say to guard or to attend carefully to take care of so that we can be properly taken care that's what david was been taken care and here because of the prayer of my lord and savior jesus christ we aren't been at consumed therefore satan cannot touch you but it can influence you by false teachings by false doctrines as you have in your denominations today wherever they have neglected day by day to carry or to give the word of lord god as number one priority to teach word by word line by line precept upon precept it is as good as you are choosing barabbas rather than christ and satan knows very well how to deceive you and that's the word what we read the power for you you have to grow up into grammatias the power as a disciple carrying your cross every day writing the word of lord god and having in you to be filled up with the thinking of christ you know dear brethren the sooner the better you first get graduated in the word of the lord of a god then employ into any business the first part of this life is god the father who has given this life it is for him rather than having chaff to be filled in your bands better be filled with the wheat I have an absolute confidence every day you learn two or four words as i said five words of intelligence is better than having 10000 words which make do not understand others so every day make up to fill up your life with the standards of truth because time is short so dear brethren the prayer which christ our lord our god prayed on our behalf in honor of that prayer though as saul went along to go on to destroy david the greater he tried to destroy the greater david got succeeded because lord was with him and that's the great lesson what we learn the six factors being mentioned for us in first samuel chapter 16 in verse 18 one of the servant of saul is not the minister of saul but a servant of saul if he were for the minister of saul three times though he sent we learn three times when the rebellion of saul continues to take on david three times when david goes on to stay with samuel and he reports all the things what saul was doing and so to get back to him he sends his ministers for the first time the second time and the third time they were also being anointed of the holy ghost they also speak parables but not the servants so here we find the difference when the servant of saul when the evil spirit comes upon saul he says i have seen a man from the tri- from the son of jesse who is cunning player having an expertise level of knowledge in that particular field what so we have been called we have exposed these words he is a mighty valiant man and we have understood that he has been taking day by day his life to become a disciple growing up into gramity as as per the demands of the word of the lord and he is man of war ish malkam and the man of war having his blood all the days of his life to be as a disciple oriented and goes on to become gramity as that's the scribe and he is man of war followed by he is prudent in matters that means he is well aware how to deal wisely you know today people they are not aware how to deal wisely they are like the idols dead and we have been given in second timothy 316 and 17 the inspiration of the scriptures the reason after reproof correction training or instruction and having that doctrine it says 
which can make you wise unto salvation. So you know the scriptures, he says, right from your mother's womb while you were still brafos. And how important it is to have godly parents and the parents discuss about the word of the Lord of a God when you have been conceived. So if the word writes, right from the mother's womb, brafos, you know the scriptures. Why? Because your parents have to teach. That's the rule. And you have to discuss. So what do they make? They make you wise. Therefore the scriptures have been given for you to become wise. The same thing over here, David. You know the number six which has been assigned to man. Every man out of his old sin nature activities, the five facets of the soul plus the old sin nature, the six things, representing the man over here, because he has been made in the image of God to teach us we are different from the things on this world. Having the mentality, volition, emotion, consciousness and norms and standards. So we are different from other things, though the plants have been there or even the animals have been there. They cannot have the same thing because God made us in His image, in His standards of life. So being in such image, we have to be the men wise enough. From there you have fallen by looking into the patsy followed by Adam upon Eve and Eve upon the standards of Satan. So you know very well. So man falling down or passing down the patsy, the six things he has been changed. His mentality gets corrupted. When his mentality gets corrupted or thinking gets corrupted, it becomes distorted like these idols. They have mouth, they cannot talk. They have ears, they cannot hear. They have eyes, they cannot look. So they vanish off. And that's what today much of the world, as we look over there in the book of Revolution, some of the men whose names, before the foundation of the world itself, he says, that they will be not written in the book of life. And though the people will talk about predestination or unlimited atonement. Atonement is unlimited, but you are not predestined if you don't believe in Christ. Believing in Christ, you are predestined in the Lord. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. But there will be some hard-hearted men who never open up their eyes. As we look today, much of the people in the present Christendom trying not to walk in the holiness of Lord God, the Father in heaven according to His demands, but go on to make that which is lie by loving it, by living it. So we learn in very simple words, there will be men, even in the present Christendom, though we are asking you to come back and exegete. And the reason why they are studying the Bible, they do not know. The reason why they are making up their theme, they, they study the Bible to preach. They don't study the Bible to reflect through their lives. If they are really studying the Bible to reflect their li their, their li the Word of God in their life, we wouldn't have had so many divisions. We wouldn't have had so much of great standards of old in nature to operate in your mental attitude since fighting, biting, or murmuring, disputing, grudging each other. And why you want Bible? Why you want to run the church services? To reflect back to say that you are a liar to the unbelievers. As he said, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, the Word of the Lord God, or the name of the Lord God, shall be praised. That's what he said in Malachi. But because of you, my name has been blasphemed among Gentiles. And the reason is very, very simple and clear. Because they haven't obeyed the voice of truth. The logic is very simple. Why you want to read the Bible? Why you want to make up your life? Which is not reflecting the truth, the sooner the better you wake up. Because every day, the way how Saul tries to persecute David, Satan is behind you like a roaring lion. Therefore, he says, cast all your burdens upon the Lord God and come unto me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Go back and fulfill the great desire of God the Father. When he is hunger, feed him. When he is thirsty, give him water to drink. And these things, what God the Father is intending, give the world to understand what is 
the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what is the life we have been given for us to enjoy. And these things he explains in very, very simple words, very simple words. And yet we are not able to understand them because Satan loves to blind your eyes. So Satan cannot touch you, but it can influence you with false teachings. Because men also today in the pulpit, they love to read Bible to preach. They love to read Bible to get like a positive motivation of your auto-suggestions in your subconscious mind. But they're not able to reflect or believe the word of truth. Why they don't reflect or believe the word of truth? Because they want to prove that they're serving Lord in the judgment seat of Christ with lips and not with their heart. To prove that, they're going to do it. They just want to prove that they're serving Lord God with their lips, but their hearts being very, very far away. And that's what we find today in our pulpits. They're not able to look diligently the commandments of the word of the Lord. As he said, if you obey my commandments and observe them and you keep them and you guard them, none of the sicknesses shall be upon you. But how many of the people, they're paying that price. Without paying the price to know what are the commandments or to practice the commandments of the Lord as we find in the New Testament, the law being put off because we are in grace, we are not under the law. And since we are in the spirit of the grace of the Lord God, not being under the law, the new commandments given to us to be living in the spirit if ever you breathe. If ever you are living in the spirit, make sure you walk in the spirit. If ever you are walking in the Spirit, make sure you march peripatao in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. And this new command always demands us to be conforming to the image of, Christ, image of Christ by renovating the standards of our thinking to His Word. And yet, though you have been at rebellion, God the Father, wherewith you are going to spend your eternity, looks upon us and He gives us one more day because you have to prepare yourselves to meet the Lord. He comes up to give you grace. He knows very well for eternity you are going to perish. And as Satan challenged to say, how would you put your own creation into hell? So Lord our God says, His righteousness and justice, which is the holiness of the Lord our God, has to be met. They can no wise be in the standards to compromise His righteousness or His justice. What the justice of the righteousness of Lord God demands, justice will execute. That's the two cherubs what we have. The two cherubs together is the holiness of the Lord. So He cannot go against His own essence. Therefore, he did not spare his own son, but brutally bruised him for you and for me on the cross so that now we could get well qualified being free out of sin. Because the word of Lord God teaches to us, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But through Christ Jesus, the last Adam, many might be saved by believing in faith alone, in Christ alone, and becoming the great glory of God to this people. So we have for us to understand, no, none is right. All have sinned. So in his righteousness and his justice, he did not compromise. But what did he make? Though through that one Adam, the old sin nature, the first Adam, all sin nature passed. Now through last Adam, the gift of eternal life to everyone who believeth. Everyone who has that great desire. So he did not spare his own son in the same manner tomorrow, though he is giving you every day the grace of God, he cannot compromise because the great judge who, ju who sits on the throne, he is the truth. And the life of your hypocrisy, the life of your still having your lips dedicated to lies, 
anything of your life which is not related to the word of the Lord or God or reflecting the glory of God through his word, you cannot live with God the Father. You have given an invitation to come to the wedding to the wedding invitation of his son. You are given that invitation to the wedding feast. And since you have been given that wedding feast and invitation, you cannot come there naked. Just imagine going to your feast of your, sorry, called to be wedding invitation by your family, though it may be of economically poor or rich. And if there is anyone who is coming over there, with no garments, naked, as the word records there, you will call him, he is a lunatic. And there is no need for us to be inspected by the wedding master, or what we call the father, in this parable of Matthew 22. But even the people who are sitting there, they would get annoyed and they would say, why is a lunatic, why he has come naked? Not like to prove as Amos or Isaiah did when they walked naked to show forth that this man don't have integrity and truth. Though he has given them the word of Lord God, they're stripped of the truth. So there is nothing of a covering for them in their life to prove. So he walked naked. Not like that, but here in the wedding invitation, what we look, you're expected to come at least with minimum clothes. Though the word of Lord God is very specific, the wedding garments of royalty. And that's what we have been given. But I'm talking on this earth, at least to expect. If anyone is coming, though he may not have a costly apparel, you'll have to look upon him and you will find to see that he will have at least minimum clothes, minimum clothes, minimum clothes. And that's what it happens. And you will call him that he will be lunatic if he is not able to have minimum clothes then how much more it would be when you are appearing before the presence of God the Father and not doing or performing according to the great demands of the word of the Lord and how would you expect to be there? You cannot. So the logic is very simple. Cover up your life with the truth. Graciously we have been given this invitation to enter into that wedding feast. Prepare yourself. That's what we find the passage in Revelation 19, chapter 19, verses 7 through 9. We have there the one who have prepared themselves being ready. And these are the people wherewith he says they will keep the garments washed, as that what we look over there in Revelation 20 to 14. And what they do, they day by day clean or day by day prepare for the garments of the Lord of a God. Because if you're not preparing yourselves, he says in Revelation 19.7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready, the wife being the church. Hittai Mazo, that meant to say she has been making all the preparations which are being drawn from the oriental custom of sending on before kings on their journeys persons to level the roads and make them passable. That's what the work is now which we are doing. That's the work which we are going through now in this church age. So he says, preparing the minds to give the Messiah a fit reception and secure his blessings. So Hitai Mazo went to say to make ready every believer's brain, every believer's frontal lobe, every believer's thinking, so that you are no longer deceived by the lies of Satan. When you look upon the king of judges who is going to sit upon the white throne, you will understand. He talks nothing but the truth, and we have been given for us the glimpse of the word of God, which is nothing but the word of God, your life. The dogmas, the religion, myths, we don't care. We seldom care about that. We have the verbal inspiration of the scriptures in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And our bona fide duty is to go and study and learn them. More than the necessary food and water, what you take. Because tomorrow when you're going to judge, when you're going to sit upon that judge, is going to be there to judge you and me. He reflects nothing but the truth. Therefore, in Colossians 1, when Apostle Paul writes his great burden, 
He says in verse 24, at least a little part from my side to pay for the standards of which Christ our Lord our God has kept us alive. And what are the standards? At least a little part, the sufferings of Christ to that body. What is that? The mental agony of Christ. We cannot pay the vicarious sufferings of the Lord, but the mental agony. And what is that? To prepare and to make every believer perfect and complete in the standards of the word of the Lord of a God. And that preparation is called hetai mazo, to make the brain of this people to have a perception to receive Christ or to make fit as they would be into the standards of the teachings of Messiah. So that's the word hetai mazo, to make ready. So have you been made ready to give a fit reception? You know, the problem with us is many of the people, they're trying to study the word or learn the word to preach, but not to have that reception to retain and to reflect with proper meditation. And to reflect that, not in the memory standards of your thoughts, but a life that has been changed, a life that has been growing up into the Christian integrity of the word of the Lord, a life that which is something superior. You're not walking according to the demands of such truth. A life that which is absolutely superior. A life that which is absolutely clear and true. If every believer or the pastor teacher would reflect the truth in his life in a practical way, I think they would be not of a great time to be taken hold for evangelizing this entire earth. When the truth is there, the truth will set us free. So walking truth, living truth, making truth to be a number one priority, we know very well the evil spirit <coughs> will not persecute you. The greater you love to learn the truth and live the truth, the greater Satan trembles for the truth. The only thing is Satan, what he doesn't want, he doesn't want to open up your minds for the true way of life in Christ. Because as he said in John 14, 6, as he says in the book of Revelation, I am Alpha through Omega. I was dead, I am alive. Reaching to us in his mouth cometh out the two-edged sword. Teaching to us the importance man does not live by bread alone, but by every word, remote a declaration of the pastor teacher which comes from the mind of Christ. So he emphasizes. When you shall know the truth, the truth will set you free. And Satan knows very well not to give it the truth. When you know the truth, he will be absolutely trampling down Satan under your feet. And he will live a life of absolute confidence to express the great things what the word of Lord God says. That if it were a sample, if it were an ensample of the heavenly glorious things that we need to represent that should be right now in the church age for us, because we have been given much and expected much from Christ. If ever there want to be any heavenly, illuminary glory to be manifested, as he says in Philippians 2.14, shining forth as light luminaries holding forth in your hand, and which is called to be the word of God in the midst of this perverse and crooked, adulterous and sinful generations, then now is the time. But you're all not true to your own lives. Just go back and look what the word of Lord God says and what they think these people they're practicing. They're not true. They don't reflect the truth. In simple things to the major things, when they're not able to keep the simple things, how we could expect them to be in the major things of the word? The simple things, as you know very well, the word says, if you don't come every day to the mind of Christ, if you don't come to the standards of the Lord God every day, you are not of the Father. You are not able to understand these words. You are not worthy of me when he said, you are not of the Father, in simple words. You don't come every day to carry your cross and follow my Christ and renovate the standards of your thinking. From the Rimata declaration of the pastor teacher, it's not just your personal time which you give to hours 40 minutes. It is what you make up your time to learn the word from the pastor teacher, assemble the church or get back into your Zoom app or whatsoever it is. But every day make up to learn the word in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. First know the word of God, 
knowing the word of God will solve the riddle and the puzzles of this human history of life for the unsearchable questions what he is thinking he can find solutions and he cannot find solutions until and unless he comes to learn from the mind of Christ or the word of Lord God which has been revealed and kept for us in this Bible. If he doesn't come to diligently search the mind of Christ, what we have been given, he cannot understand the life, what he's going through. He would be just a mechanical one to rise up early in the morning or to work out in the nights for his salary. And he would be just passing down his life as the age comes upon from kid he would become a teenage, from teenage he would become now an employee and from employee he would think now he's having enough salary and enough money to get married because of libido or some other things as the parents also force them. And afterwards he goes on to have procuring children and afterwards he loves to spend his time and money and the things pertaining to earn more because now he's been obligated, not only just he, has, he was alone first but now he becomes to have a family pack. So in order to fulfill his family pack desires, he would just come back and execute his life to the rest of the days till he could retire from that job. And what does he do? He would love to spend his time into the mechanical way, but not to understand the true spiritual life, not to understand the purpose of your breathing to prepare yourselves for eternity, to learn from the eternity viewpoint of the word of the Lord. So you're not prepared well, hetai mazo. And therefore they just use the scriptures to for their own benefit. And when they're using the scriptures for their own benefit, they die sin unto death. So what have you read? How have you read it? That's what Lord God asks several times in his pilgrimage trip. When he comes to save the sinful mankind, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have you not read it? How have you read it? So every day you need to make sure to give up your time first. To learn under the bona fide gift of the pastor, teacher, day by day, day by day, day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. You have to learn. And the greater you reject to learn the truth, the greater you are walking at the death beat of Satan, which is your own peril. And under that own peril, you're destroying your true life. If you're not well qualified to enter into heaven, if you're not able to understand the standards of truth in heaven, so what is the purpose of your life? And how much of the time you want to still spend on this earth by not knowing your true purpose in life? You know why? Because of the great prayer in John chapter 17. We have been still sustained. So I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. And then he says, I have given them thy word, and the world hated them. That's the thing with David. He's having in him the fear of the Lord of a God to do the will of Lord God the Father, and is executing the plan of God the Father. Therefore the world is hating. The way of Saul is hating. The same thing you can look now in simple standards. Saul comparing to the fallen nature of Satan or Satan, you can look. It was there to defend the divine essence of the holiness of the Lord of a God. And it has lost because of its pride and it fell. The same thing today, you and I as a believer in Christ have been kept alive to defend the essence of the holiness of the Lord by proving the integrity that Lord God is true and correct and perfect. So I've been kept alive to defend the same holiness. And now since Satan was in such a place of guarding or taking care, being the personal guard of the Lord, and it was the way how it could execute all the commands of the Lord. So it has been replaced. So he has been said, as Saul was being told to understand, I have rejected him. So now you go and prepare for me. 
a man to be anointed after my own heart. And now we look, you and I as a human being, they're comparing to David. And the command of Lord God, the Father's plan to be executed by Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, His Son, revealing now to us these things by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have been called, or we have been told, to be like David. The human man, or the anthropology, what we call, is like David. And now Satan, like a roaring lion, the way of Saul, went along to be against David in each and everything. And there we also look in comparison, if you want. When the music was played, Saul would have been coming back to normalcy. The evil spirit would live. And Lucifer is also the prince of music. And today you know very well, any sound of music or any sound, in fact, it will divert your mind. So you should have no disturbances. So music over there as well, just to talk ironically in the standards of the subject. So Saul went along to be hating David. The same thing over here. Satan hates you. He doesn't love you. Therefore, the punishment it was been given in the case of Job and his property to Satan, except his life. The way how it destroyed, it hates you. But in the case of David to Saul, Lord hasn't given permission. Because the greater you fear the Lord God, the greater Lord God protected you. That's the very simple logic. The greater you honor Lord God, the greater Lord God gave you His will and direction to be done in this way. So here we look the standards which the Word of Lord God teaches. The greater we honor, the greater we do the will of God the Father, the greater Lord God would make up our lives to honor Him. And when you're going to honor Him, the greater He is going to protect us. That's very simple logic. Now, Satan, like a roaring lion, it makes you all to be destroyed. But Lord God cometh up with His grace and He teaches, saying that, don't give place to the devil, but rather resist him and he will flee from you. Because of this great prayer, the world hateth you, and yet God the Father comes up with His great grace of plan to teach us that He is always with us so that we can live an abundant mature life in Christ abundant life mature life in Christ how only when we grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine so how to become an abundant and mature life then first you should know where you are you are in the life like a baby who thinketh of its own self and if the denied things of which it has been desired, it will rise a rumpus. So, it seeks it. And then, furthermore, it makes it own its feelings. And if the feelings are easily hurt, and it is often jealous, and a baby lives to be served, it never serves. It drinks milk and cannot eat strong meat. <coughs> Excuse me. It drinks milk and cannot eat strong meat. It cries but never sings, though it may be a case. It tries to talk but never can make sense. So the infant characteristics are so prominent in the lives of many church members because they have been born into the family of God, but they have failed to grow up spiritually. Such is the thing of the fate of you. If you are not able to come back to resist the devil, 
So then furthermore, some Christians grow to be little children spiritually and stop there. So the characteristics of them, they are untruthful, they are envious, they are cruel. If rebuked, they become martyrs. If crossed, they become resentful and often make a scene. So they are tale bearers, repeating everything they hear. And in adults, it is called as gossip. They are given to emotional outbursts and are easily puffed up. They love praise and will accept it from any source. They seek only the things that appeal to self. So you need to understand, if you are not resisting the devil, so that the devil can flee from you, then you should still raise a question, are you still spiritually child? So we have the young man stage again in 1 John 2.13. Spiritual growth to that of a young man is not reached by many. He is strong and having the vigor and viral, a vigor and valor of his life. And he has been well, well able to overcome his enemy. You know, that's what it is. Resist the devil. How while you are in youth carrying the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God, as we read that in Lamentations 3. Carry the yoke while you are in youth. How could a youth cleanse his path when he is keeping his word of God? Psalms 119 verses 9 through 11. The same thing over here. We have this truth for us to learn, the vigor and valor of the word, the vigor and valor of the mind of Christ. So, young man, how could you overcome evil? You know, people today, the, the, the saying of the world goes, the lusts of the youth, the sins of the youth. Remember Joseph, the way how he ran away, fearing God, not men, not fearing the CC camera footage in the church or somewhere in the world. He knew God is looking and he said, how can I sin against God? But today people want to have an example to say, since he is youth, that is his age, he has to do such sins. No, dear brethren, the vigor and valor of the youth, what he has given for us is to overcome Satan. While you are in youth, you can easily overcome Satan. You know why? Because you will be free from your marriage. Once you are getting married, you will spend your time to please your wife or your husband. But prior to that, you are having time to please your master, who is called the Creator, Kurion. And our master, our Creator, Kurion, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have been given the time to please Him now. You have made up your time to learn about Him now. So what do you do? Carry your cross. If your love affair with God the Father is superb, then any affair of this life on this earth will be absolutely brilliant. People don't have that superb love affair with the Lord. A love affair to be taken in more tender care than anything else of His Word. Not to hurt, not to lie. And having not such kind of a love affair with the Lord God, people are falling traps. You know, how about your love affairs today, if you would ask? Your love affairs are all the time lies. Multiple things you have in your mind. And trying to say that you are serving Lord God in spirit and in biblical truth, but in reality you are not. You are polygamous. The way how the people of Israelites fell for this Balaam kind of worship, and though Joshua said for them in chapter 24, You cannot serve such a holy Lord of a God. They said, We will. Then he said, You are your own witnesses for it. They said, We will be the witnesses for it. And he said, I call today the witness, the earth and the heaven. That you are saying that you will be your own witness to serve our Lord of a God. But what did they do? They end up in same mannerism of judges when we look in chapter 2 or the chapter 21 of the judges there was no king in israel they did as the way they seemed good for them the word king malak malak meant to say there was not a man who could have in their blood the vigor and valor of their life which could beg them to be the disciple joined as disciple and growing up into grammatias these are the three pictographical representation for the word malak 
your blood should get oriented to become a disciple of the word of the Lord. And that blood what you have been given to become a disciple of the word of the Lord should in return become growing up into grammatias. That's what we look. The time of the period of judges after Samson. A priest of Judah. And then he comes. He was so happy in his heart that he said to the tribe of Dan, he was taken later on. But earlier when this incident comes in Judges chapter 17, he said in his heart, ten shekels of silver a coat to wear. They went along to do the things that which is contrary to the mind of Christ. So here he says, have a pure relationship first with the Lord. Have your relationship brilliant with the Lord. Because Lord God is protecting you from the way how David was protected on Saul. No matter however you persecuted him, he gave even him a chance to learn and to understand that he shall spare, even in the cases where we look, David spared Saul. So here we look. When his daughter says, Why haven't you brought the sick man to me? So she said, He pretended to be sick so that he can spare your life. You know, the church age believers are so powerful, you believe it or not, given equal privilege and equal opportunity so that you shall no longer compare to any other standards but only to the standards of Christ. The same spirit which was in incarnation of Lord God the Son, the same Spirit which executed the life of Lord God the Son, the same thing which each and everything Lord God the Holy, Lord God the Son has done through the Holy Ghost, the same thing has been given for us to be indwelled. So that's the reason we can spare Satan. You know, you have such kind of a power. You have such kind of a great power. You're really not able to understand the power which is in you. Therefore, being born again in the Lord, we have been said we are dead to the world, necrosate, and we shall rise about to look upon the life by mortifying. The word says mortifying, but the Greek says put to death, necrosate. Being risen with Christ, our life to conform to the new man, to the image of Lord God's creation. And therefore, as David spared Saul several times, even we, when we are marching ahead to look upon the divine viewpoint of the word of the Lord of our God, we are sparing Satan, because already it has been dead. We are showing pity on Satan being trampled by the Lord of our God, and we are walking as the truth shines in us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, rather than to go and trample it again and again, we are just showing pity. And that will be a great insult for Satan. You have shown pity. Rather than trampling, you have shown pity. But today, Christians are not able to realize this power and show the pity as the way David shows pity on Saul. Or we have to show in the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, controlling, guiding, leading us upon Satan. Because we know greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. We know the power of mind which God the Father has given unto us. He has given the spirit of such kind of a power, dunamis, agape love, and sophronisma. So we have to show pity. Satan is nothing of a greater for you, except it could come with its schemes and plans. It cannot even dare enough to touch you, except Satan comes to give you. It comes to make a veil upon the truth. Every time Satan comes, it comes to make you not to know the truth and deceive you. You know, if he would give your time to the law, the time which is given to him, not your tithes. Stupidly, men love to talk about tithes, but it is not the tithes. It is the tithe of your time. 
Give faithfully the tithe of your time, two hours, forty minutes, to the Lord. Satan trembles. You are pitying Satan. When you get not to take your time to the word of the Lord, you are really losing out. Now Satan comes behind you to trouble you. To take away the truth from you which is even left over and tries to fill in up with all the silly stupid viewpoints of man and in such a way they try to give up in such viewpoint of man that you're really getting into the state called to be delusions and how great delusions you have today do you know dear brother that you still believe lies rather than truth. You still don't go to search the word as we read the word in the case of Elihu in chapter 32 of Job in verse number 6. I dare us not, Zakal, if you don't go back to dig or use your weapons by digging in and taking in the right word of the Lord of God in your life, if you don't use. So he says, I dare it not, and Satan knows very well the greater the days you spend by not digging the word of Lord God in the truth, the greater success Satan has in this life. And it can never make you to be prepared to meet your Lord. Because you have been not digging and taking the right word of the Lord. So in, Sa in Job 32 he says, I was afraid. The word zakel, and the word zakelo here, what it meant to say is very simple. Using the weapons to dig and take the word of the Lord and make it up as a wall of fortification to be the disciples of the truth. That's the way Zakal, you're afraid today because you're not take, taking up your weapons of warfare to dig and take the word of the Lord. You're not taking up to build a wall of fortification. You're not becoming up to become the disciples of the word of the Lord. So Satan is successful. And Satan knows very well we have the people to show pity on it. To spare it as David spared Saul. When you take in the word of Lord God, there is nothing of the tricks of Satan to get operated in your life. You know, your great failure in your life is that you neglect to walk by the word in the power of the Spirit. Simply, clearly, humbly obey the commandments of the Lord. Daily carry your cross, follow my Christ. Simply obey it. Bluntly obey it. Don't try to add any thinking for that. Don't try to remove anything from that because the word of Lord God says nothing to be added, nothing to be deleted. When it is to the word of God, he says it is his essence. You cannot add anything to his essence. You cannot remove anything from his essence. You shall not let go even Iota or Kerira. Just carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God while you are in yoke. Because you know very well, David showed pity to Satan or Saul. We the men have to show pity. How? In the sense of executing and marching in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being completely packed up with the word of the Lord in your soul. And that's the image, what we are talking about David, when servant of Saul is giving. He is cuning in work and playing the harp. He is a gibor, Kali'il, having a great, mighty, valiant man. He is Ish Malkam, man of war. He is prudent in matters having to be well aware to know the length, the breadth, the height and the depth pertaining to the grace of God. And in appearance, he is having in his mind the authority of the word of the Lord. Comely appearance. The pictograph over there represents for that word having a mark of authority followed in his head. And above all, the sixth thing it teaches Lord is with him. And if Lord God be with us, who can be against us in each and every incident of your life? It is Lord God, the Holy Ghost, with you. 
He has given us such a privilege to understand that our body is not our own, being bought with a great price with God the Father. We need to glorify God the Father in this body through the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit which was in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, the same thing He has requested. He begged before God the Father so that we can have it. And having in that spirit, we cannot be still liars. We cannot be still kids. But at the right age of Aang, we have to dedicate our lives to the great praise of His glory. We have to be very, very unique as Aangman. And when they pass the stage of Aangman, now we will become the stage of the Father. But in the cycle of life of this biological process, you know very well when you will become a father, when you will become a grandfather, when you will become a great-grandfather to live a life like Job, seeing till the fourth generation. That's another story of this earth. But spiritually, you haven't even budged an inch to get out of a kid. Therefore, you malign, you gossip, you anger, you have your indifference, showing partiality, not forgiving others. Whatsoever your old sin nature is still trying to control you is your kiddish way of life or called to be a moron way of life or called to be still the standards of people who are not able to make proper decisions because they are either still brafos or they are still into the standards of not having their reasoning to be developed. You know, we have read that, the four categories of the kids. And over here, the third category is Technon, very called to be a disciple. The fourth category is the adult son. But whenever he's using the word son, while you're still babe, it meant to say Brafos. There is one more name, wherewith it says, they're not mature enough to take proper decisions. They cannot open up their mouth to reason well. So either you went to such stage or you're still into the breakfast drinking milk. When you're having grudges, when you're having in the standards of mental attitude sins to reign in your thoughts, you're still having such things. But you're not an angman. The angman who can take up his cross every day. The angman who is able to bear the weight of the Lord while he's in his youth, he can carry the yoke of the Lord. You're not still the angman, you're still... The same kid, but in looking your age, looking upon the time, as he says in Hebrews 5.12, you should be communicators of Bible doctrine. You should be the man to show pity upon Satan, like the way David showed pity to Saul. And when his daughter was being asked, what is that? Why haven't you bought him? And daughter says to Saul, if he would come, he would, he, if he would be, he would... He would kill you in the sense he went away to spare your life. The same thing what the world should know now. Satan should know very well now. As it says, we are more than conquerors in everything what we do. So Satan should know in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, where we are operating. It cannot even touch us. It cannot even make us to be in the realm of fear of death or anything or loss of loved ones, loss of this, loss of that. You know, God the Father loves to be with those men to teach you the word in simple words who have taken the stand, the great stand, to turmoil their entire life and let go everything and to be his followers. Until he could come to that situation or decision in life, God the Father is going to examine you. Therefore, the cost of disciple, the price which we need to pay. Let go your own life, far less you're worrying about the life of the standards of your son, daughter, wife, father, mother, brother, sister. He says your own life, even if you don't hate your own life, you cannot come. So God the Father wants such men who would love to give everything up and who would love to look the desire of God the Father to be fulfilled. Such will be the stages of such 
great growth. And what is that growth we have there? The growth from Engman to father stage. While you are in youth, you are not able to carry the yoke and the burden of the Lord of a God, then how would you be prepared to reach the stage of father? But the word of the Lord of a God says, looking upon the time, you should be communicators of such truth. You should be in such a kind of a great word. You should be in such a kind of a great reality. So here he mentions, while you are in youth, you will be having the characters to carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord and you can overcome your enemy and show pity as the way David showed pity to Saul. Because Satan knows you have been given the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost very well. And it is such kind of a great power that nothing can offend when you are walking in the Spirit. The trials, the temptations, the frustrations, whatsoever they are, all those things have been absolutely tested and they are found worthy of it. You have passed the test. As the way how Job was being persecuted to prove his integrity, as the way how Paul was being persecuted to prove his integrity. Same thing, you and I will be proved our integrity. Nothing that can stop or hinder you to carry your cross every day. Nothing that can make you so that you can say, today for such and such reason I would stop to come to class. You know, he says in Job 8, oh sorry, John, uh, sorry, it's in Proverbs 8, verses 34 through 36. Really blessed one are they who love to spend their time in the presence of Lord God the Father and make up the things according to the great and unique word of the Lord. Really, these are the blessed ones, Macarian ones, because these are the people who have given completely to know that those who love the word of Lord God, they love life, and those who hate the word of Lord God, they love death. And such a great life which has been given for us to understand. Those who love life, those who love the word of God, they should love life because they will be given greater grace by the Lord. If you're loving the word of Lord God, you have been loving your life. If you hate, if you reject to come and take every day the word of Lord God, because it is long back recorded for us in Proverbs 8, day by day, day by day, day by day, day by day. And how much of our life we have been spent over here on this earth. Tomorrow will be calculated from the time you believe in Christ. But people are not able to move from the stage of childhood. They are still Napiers, not able to make up their decisions, not able to open up their mouth and talk. They are still so foolish. They are still, they have made up their lives to such lies on this earth. That looking upon the time, they should be at least like Angman grown up, showing the signs of growth. You know, when Samson was being cheated by Delilah, again his hair grow up. There are some signs of growth. But every time you have been deceived by Satan, as the word says, that they shall not have the word of Lord God in them. Because the way Satan loves you is that to hate you in the sense of not giving you the word. But it loves to give you the details of life. You know what people would say? At least in this pilgrimage trip, what we're going through in whichever manner of religion or the things pertaining to the flesh we came up, let's enjoy to the maximum. And then what? After we die, who has seen the heaven or the hell? Who have seen the things, what will happen after we die? So better enjoy. And that's what Satan gives you, to love you, in the sense of giving you the pleasures of the lusts of your flesh, as the word concludes. The pride of life, the lust of flesh, and the lust of eye.
That's very simple. That's how Satan loves to conclude and give you, to say that it's loving you. But Christ our Lord our God says, you love the world, you are enemy to with me. How do you love God the Father? Through his word. If you love me, keep my commandments. And what are his commandments? From childhood, grow up into young man. From young man, grow up into adulthood. As we look, milk, from milk to bread, from bread to strong meat. The logic is very, very simple and very clear over there. So strong meat are the category, what we look called to be the father stage. So here in the father stage, already being young, they can overcome the wicked. So flee or resist the devil, it fleeth from you. And how do you resist the devil and flee it from you? Inculcate the truth in the original pictographical representations of the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Learn the truth. And Satan will flee because the things what we have for us in the original language of the scriptures, according to the standards of such great truth, what we have is really something of a great value. Because the earth cannot know that if it were not been revealed by the Holy Spirit of God, being penned and coded and kept for us in the original languages of the scriptures, until and unless you have a zeal to pass down the stages of kid or children into youth and carrying the yoke from youth now carrying it, coming into the stage of the father, till he could come back or have that great desire to pass down or a great logic to learn that. Till you could have that, you cannot be. So in simple words, he emphasizes over here for us that while you are in your youth, you can overcome the enemy. And he has a vision for the future and the faith and courage to tackle it. And then he is preparing for his productive years, as we read. A young man spiritually by putting away childish things and grow. So how you can become a young man spiritually, put off the childish things, you know, in this nature of this life cycle of this biological process, you put off the childish things, you don't do the childish things because you want to grow. First Corinthians 13 verse 11. So now we come back to the father stage. So what is the father stage? The stage is a spiritual development which can be reached by all, as we start, as we illustrating you, as the way David shows the pity upon Saul. So it is, as David shows the pity. <laughs> we, being at the stage of father, should show pity on Satan. That means you have to show the signs of your spiritual growth. The great standards of your spiritual growth. Show the signs of your spiritual growth. And the first sign of spiritual growth. Sacrifice everything on this life. Carry your cross and obey the mandates of the word of the Lord. The spiritual growth which has been lacking today in the church. You can have your full development, he says, full development of your spiritual growth. And furthermore, when you have reached that full development, as very few can attain it, the spiritual father now has peace with God because he knows the peace of God. And now he rejoices in his spiritual children so that they can walk in truth. And then furthermore, the spiritual father has learned contentment under all circumstances. That's what we are trying to teach you, no matter whatever it is. Whether it may rain or shine, something it may be in your life, X, Y, Z, as your work schedule goes on. Contentment is the key for godliness. Contentment is the power to look that he can show pity as David showed concern and pity over Saul.
no matter how Saul tried to attack and kill him, no matter however Satan tries to deceive you, as Apostle Paul could say, we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. It meant to say what? We know all the schemes and the strategies of Satan. And the only key to overcome or the only key to be in the realm of wise men, learn the word of God, that's it. Become the disciples of the word of the Lord of a God, that's it. And you don't have anything greater thing than that. Learning the word of Lord God, making the word of Lord God to be number one priority. Nothing else than that. So the logic in it is very, very simple. To overcome having greater wisdom than your enemies, as we read that in Psalms 119 verses 97 and 98. He emphasizes how through thy commandments, and the reason why we have been kept alive or to have greater wisdom than the ancients because of the spirit of the Lord of a God by guarding his commandments, making up our every vigor and valor of divine sperma of the Lord, as we call the sperma being referring to Christ, to build our every perception of thought as disciples or as grown up into grammatias. So that's very simple. So having the divine sperma of the Lord, making up every perception in the mind of the Lord and making up to be according to the standards of the truth of the Lord is what our life is. So he said you can be wiser than your enemies. And what is the key? Contentment. Godliness with contentment is a great gain, says the word in First Timothy 6. Contentment. Being persistent, as we illustrated that for you. Working out monthly once, nine hours a day in a gym doesn't meet the standards of the way how every day, though you spend 20 minutes in the gym to make your body to be formulated. And we have been read, physical exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having the stages of your spiritual growth like a father. Having your life according to the standards of great word of God like father. So here we learn contentment, the characteristics of the father. So first of all, he will reach spiritual development. He will have peace with God. Because he knows what is that peace of God he can attain in life purely by James 4, but James 3, verse 18, we read 17 and 18. First relationship with God, purity, and then followed by the peace. So he knows in very simple terms. He has peace with God because he knows the peace of God, because he has reached the spiritual development in God to become mature believers in Christ. And... He rejoices with the children who walk in the truth and he has learned contentment under all circumstances. Philippians 4, 11, no matter what, learn the word of God, teach the word of God. It's not the affairs of your life that is going to hinder. No matter what, learn and teach the word of Lord God. And then he knows the only source of true strength which is nothing but the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, through the word of Lord God, wherewith we can do all things through Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, who is going to strengthen us, all things, wherewith he is going to strengthen us. And then he does not brood over the past, but looks to the future, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Knowing that, looking forward for the high and he heavenly calling of the pure, holy, heavenly calling of the Lord God, he look at the things for forward. He doesn't look upon the past. The failure is gone. Yesterday is gone. As you grow upon day by day, better you have to become from child to youth, from youth to adult one in the Lord. So the logic resides very, very simple. Not to brood over the past. 
but rather to be looking into the future, brooding over the past will not suffice you anything or which is not going to make you up to be happy because day by day we have been given grace upon grace to become better by better. The greater you don't come to become better by better, there is no meaning of giving you day by day one more grace. So the greater you have been given one more day, the greater it is for you to become better. So we don't need to look upon the past. Have we redeemed the time yesterday? Do not worry. Today you have the plan of the future. Get back into the futurity. Learn and become. The judge who is sitting on that is a truth. He doesn't have anything else to entertain you there. Those who love lie or make lie or live lie, those are dogs, those are sorcerers, those are witchcraft. The categories of the people mentioned, he says they will not anywise enter, they will be outside. So how to enter before him, how to stand in him and how to be cleansed from him, how to have our part in the standards of the first resurrection with the Lord and to be with him and not to be destined for the second death. He says in simple words, become like the stage of father as mentioned over here in 1 John chapter 2 in verse number 13. And the characteristics of the father stage. He has been spiritually grown up. Very few can attain there. That's the problem. As Apostle Paul says, I look unto the father. As I look unto Christ and I run. You look unto me and you follow me. And coming back to 1 John 2, 6. We have been stated we shall no longer walk like Paul or Peter or John. But we have been called to walk according to the great footsteps of the Lord of God. So the logic is very, very simple. Walk according to the footsteps of my Christ. So, very few will attain the stage of Father. And that doesn't mean the physical Father, but the grown-up Father in Christ. Mature man, like the way have John writes, I'm happy to know that my children walk in truth. So the simple logic over here, what we have, walking in truth, to be in the standards of such truth. So walking in the great and unique word of the Lord of a God is our life. And the greater we walk, in the truth, the greater we make up our life as spiritual father in Christ. And that's the stages what God the Father has given us to attain by showing pity. You know, when you grow up to become from the young man to a father stage, you know how to show pity, like David showed concern towards Saul. Now you're showing pity. All the traps, all the dramas, all the circumstances of life where with Satan loved to destroy the will of God in our activities of day-to-day -day career in the Lord. Now you learn the truth and you're really showing pity. Because you know very well, the power of God protects each and every believer to conform to the image of Christ and that you have enjoyed it, that you have learned it, that you have been walking in that place. And since you had it, you're fearless. And as the like the way how Moses said, he is not happy though he has been spent twice with the presence of the Lord 40-40 days, which doesn't match for anything. Every day I've been granted, just look into the years of your life. For example, 120 years like Moses. Just calculate the days. For 10 years you have been surviving, 3650 days. For 100 years, 36500 days. Again, you should add for that another 
7,100 or 7,200 days, whatever it could come, 3,650 into twice. So that 7,000 plus this 36, almost all, if you're living 120 years, you would have to the standards of 43 or 44,000 days on this earth. And in that we have to let go till he could reach maturity. And now in the time of his ministry from age 80 to 120, Moses spends his time before the presence of God the Father, 40 days each, and that doesn't match a thing. He's not happy, he's not satisfied. He wants to spend more time with the Lord, so he says, Lord, I want to look at thee once again. And today, the church age people are not able to spend the time to reach the maturity stage. Every day you have been given, just calculate your time. Every day, Moses spent being not indwelled by the Holy Spirit. That was a ministry of the Old Testament. We have been called to live according to the ministry of the enlightening ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, controlling, indwelling, leading and guiding us. You know how much more privileged we are. And yet you're not able to grow up to your spiritual fatherhood. Physically, you become a father. You'll become a grandfather. You'll become a great-grandfather. But spiritually, when you will become a father? As we look this lad, David, comparing to Goliath, Saul says, you are a lad, you are a youth. But Goliath was a man of war right from his youth. And the point over here we learn, the day when you believe in Christ, when you overcome, and you give nothing but the word of Lord God as number one priority with burning zeal, the day when you're coming up there, you're going to look. God the Father will look upon you, upon your vigor and valor, up to what extent you're really overcoming the world, up to what extent you have the time for the truth. But today people don't have time for the truth. The brain has been filled up with Facebook, WhatsApp, or whatsoever you have, the stupid things of your social media. If your brain has been filled up by deleting all those things with the word of the Lord of a God, maybe you might be happy and you might be spending your time to know not to let it waste in the you. And while you are in youth carrying the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God, you must spend your time kneeling down in the presence of God the Father to read the Bible, to write the Bible, and to grow up like a scribe. Because they are the glorious days of your life, in your youth, to carry the yoke and the burden of the Lord God. And you are proving such kind of a perfect love relationship with God the Father, then all the affairs on this earth will be brilliant, being designed for you to enjoy them, your right woman, your right children, your right parents, your right brothers or siblings. Because in everything you want to give glory to the Lord, because you know very well all these things on this earth are temporary, the things which you do for God the Father that alone will stand, and you march ahead to decide your life to give to God, and to you go ahead to produce at every breath the character of God. But in the youth you are not having that vigor like David. To say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Blaspheming the armies of the living Lord God. You don't have that zeal. You're just passing down. Being anointed by the Lord of God and the power of Lord God the Father, it gives you that vigor and valor to talk about the truth. Because they know not and you have the truth. You need to tell them the truth. If you're not telling the truth, you will be held accountable for it. And that vigor, if you pass down from Eng, you will come to the father stage and very few can attain it because they know they're having peace with God. They understand what is the peace of God. They know what is the strength of their source. And they know they can rejoice over the children who are growing up in truth. And he knows that he has been learning contentment to be in any circumstances. And he doesn't look or brood over the past, but he looks to the future. He knows that all things work together in his life for his eternal good.
and he enjoys abundant life now and will enjoy in the life to come. Because every day, every breath we get, it is the pity what we show for Satan. Because God the Father sent his son to destroy the works of the devil. The same thing we have been kept over, over here alive and prayed by God the Father to take care of us. We are not of the world. He has given us the word of God so that we should be protected from the world and we should honor the word of the Lord of our God to the highest. And thus we have been given such life. It is the bona fide duty for us to destroy the works of devil. Wherever the high knowledge which goes against the word of Lord God by getting every thought into captivity for Christ, you need to prove that you are showing pity. You know why? The reason is very simple. Abundant life for us. Every day abundant life. No worry, no pitying, all the silly details of life. God the Father would open up the treasures of his heaven and fill our problems to be solved. He knows how to clear it up. And that doesn't mean that you keep silent. You carry your cross every day. Do the work of the Lord our God for which he has called you to do it. Be faithful in your calling. The prophets were called. They were faithful in their work. And though Elisha was been into the work of his bulls, what we look, when he comes to anoint him, he went, he sold off the bulls and he gave, in the sense of a great meat of a festival to be eaten, so that he cannot come back once again to those bulls and to work. So the point over here we learn, in whichever arena God the Father calls you, you stand faithful and God provides you the food. God supplies all your needs according to the riches of His grace. He provides you the best. You can't even imagine. Because every gift which cometh up from the Father is pure. The Father of lights, in Him there is no variation, paralagidja. There is no shading. He gives all the time the best. And when Lord God giveth, it will be a lifetime of eternity, a lifetime to enjoy it. And since you are not grown up to the Father's stage, you do not understand the peace of God, neither you understand the abundant life of God, neither you are aware the life after death, what will be an entrance for you in the heaven, because you are still kids, you are still childish. You have forgot to look the one who is sitting upon the throne of God to judge you, in whom resides nothing but the truth. You forgot him. You have really not learnt about him. You have really not understood about him. You forgot him. You are completely changed. You are thinking the one who is sitting upon there will be in your childish way of life. But childish way of life he calls moron. He doth not far-sighted, neither they are aware. To be far-sighted, they are not aware about the mystery doctrine of the church age, for what we have been said in Ephesians and Colossians to live in the standards of Philippians. So you still love to talk about the silly parables. You still love to talk about the things which have been sold, which has been said for you. We shall no longer talk in parables, but when the perfect one, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, will come, he shall guide you into all truth. But you love to emphasize your parables. You love to emphasize, yet these people do not know what is that parable as well. Dear brethren, David has been called to show pity on Saul. God created man to church the angels. 1 Corinthians 6 3. To trample down Satan under your feet. Romans 16 20. Every day you're trampling down, every breath you're trampling down, Satan under your feet, provided when you reach the stage of Father. And Satan could record you to say, I know Jesus, I know Paul. And I know the men who have reached the adult son stage, who yours? The adult son stage wherewith we call you, the category as the word of Lord God describes. Father stage. 
having still the activities of your old sin nature, maligning, gossiping, judging. People, they are still drinking milk. Not carrying the yoke of the burden of the Lord of a God while you are in youth. It is not that what you have achieved in life will make the difference tomorrow. It is what in your youth you are carrying the yoke of the burden of the Lord like a scribe and writing the word of the Lord. And growing up to be like a scribe is the real work in Christ. We have that. And you overcome the wicked one. How matter, no matter however the troubles, no matter however the things which have been given, and no matter however the things, what you have practiced or what you have been doing, The word of Lord God teaches, if God be for us, who can be against us? If you have a determined will, as we look upon David case, determined will, to say he is like just one of those beasts, either like the lion or the bear, he just counts them in such a way and he calls, just snuff them off, though he might be of six feet three cubits, who cares? So he says in simple words, they are worth for nothing and he destroys them to the cause. Having the determined will and people would love to come back and put an image like Saul upon David when he's going for the war with Goliath. He says, I don't want them. And he goes on to take his slingshot with five smooth stones. The slingshot in the pictographical representation says the authority of the person who has been as a disciple and walking day by day into the will of the Lord. So he says from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, he has in him the authority as a disciple. That's the slingshot he takes. Because the pictographical representation of the point of that word is very, very important in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Because the world may try to put upon you the image of Saul. The world may try to put upon you the image of XYZ. But here Saul, David says, I am not acquainted with all of these things. And he comes up within his casual treasure, which is the treasure of five smooth stones and a slingshot. And as we read, you come to me as in the standards of a dog. Because do you think I'm a Caleb and you have the staff? And we read that word Caleb and the word staff. Because every time he wants to come and cross check according to the standards of the truth. So he says he is not being able to take the image of Saul. But he took with him the staff, the word called to be the rod of authority which is meant to say Makel, and that Makel is nothing but from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. You will be as a disciple. And then five smooth stones. Five represents the number of grace. And then over here, the wall of fortification, what you have built according to the standards of the word of the Lord. And this fortification makes you to have your munching process perfect. And the word smooth meant to say, no matter what, you have built a wall of fortification like a disciple so that you can be from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun only to talk about the disciple-oriented work. And then the word stones, it is called bana, meant to say you have in you that strength of the word of the Lord. And then what does it take? Out of the brook, the word brook meant to say nakal, Nakal meant to say that valley. And what is that valley? It's nothing but the precious word of God wherewith you try to take in every day the word of the Lord and you love to continue it. So, no matter whatever it is in the vigor and valor, you build a wall of fortification and you become like the disciples. That's the valley. So the word sling short. And he put them in a shepherd bag and then even in a script, the word script over here for us again resembles back to the discipleship called to be el -Kut. And the word el -Kut over here meant to say that from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, you have in your basket the details of life. 
so he puts them where in a shepherd his eyesight and his viewpoint are absolutely as a disciple growing up into grammatias and in return those grammatias going on and making disciples of all the nations the word bag over here is called for us as keli and keli meant to say as scribes you have in you the discipleship program and then furthermore in a, even in his bag and he had put him in his crib the word meant is as disciples from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun you have in your basket all the things pertaining to the word of the lord and his sling do you know what is the word sling from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun he is all the time looking from the viewpoint of a disciple of the word of the lord or making disciples of the word of the lord that's the sling shot the five smooth stones what he has taken from the valley which has been collected from the word of the lord so here we look even the word of lord god is so clear so that every time you come to take in the word of lord god you're going to use as a smooth stone from that valley so your viewpoint should be making disciples of all the nations and then he draw near to the philistine he took it that in his hand is having that vigor and valor in his love and he has directed structure of the thinking process according to the commands of the word of the lord and now he comes with that strength of vigor and valor to go and approach the philistine the angman stage is that preparation having the slingshot in your hand and if the angman doesn't have that preparation he cannot reach to the father stage out of the valley is collecting five smooth stones emphasizing all the time having for you as a man grace and lord god's grace upon you to go and make disciples lord god grace upon you to grow up into grammatia so he has given you that grace so he comes up to show that grace upon you and he calls you to collect from that valley your stones representing the word of god go now to fight your enemy if you don't pass this stage you cannot reach the stage of your father as we read in matthew 5:48 when he says be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect is glorified when he produces much fruit you cannot reach that how arrogant we will be proven when there is no growth when there is no life when there is no standard of truth you're still not even into the babes list and you don't have that fear of the lord god to operate in you when you don't have that great work of lord god to be reigning in you you don't even be the child of god and today the way how the believers are walking we could look upon them they are no way indifferent from unbelievers because the way of the walk of life is not showing the fear of the lord god or showing the reverence of lord god in trembling at the word of the lord god far less you can reach the stage of your spiritual standards and the greater you reject the standards where with you have to reach the standards where the word of lord god calls you to do the greater satan is showing pity on you because you have never learned or dared enough zakal as elihu says i was off right why because there is the leniency of eldership but now man cannot have afraid of satan but rather he has to show pity on satan as the way how elihu discourses to job and he teaches to him the lie he vindicates the same thing now we are to prove every breath showing pity upon satan if we would have walked according to the will of god the father if we would have done according to the mind of the lord our god how great our life would have been we prove to satan the life what we have in christ is absolutely marvelous brilliant one and we show pity when we reach the stage of the great standards called to be the father and what a sad thing it is for us to know
Though you have been called to pray the prize every day and carry your cross. The prize in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath to live and to execute this life. How many of them they are really making their life not to live such truth? Dear brethren, we need to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. We need to make up our life according to the standards of becoming great glory to God the Father by fulfilling His desire. And our desire is nothing now. Our will is nothing except to be the desire of God the Father and the will of God the Father. And yet, if God the Father keeps you alive again tomorrow, at least grow up from the immoral life into childish life. If you are still alive again after 10 years, show the signs you have overcome like a young man and you have reached the stage of spiritual father. Why we take the time 10 years? If you come every day one hour to learn the word, it will be for 10 years. Then we can call you as Christian. If you're coming two hours a day after five years, in order to learn the entire gospel or entire counsel of the Lord of a God, minimum two hours a day for 15, 15 years. If it is one hour a day after 30 years, we can call you that you have overcome the stage of your father, of the stage of your childhood into the youth man or young man and from young man now you can overcome to become the stage of your father so dear brethren wake up we have to look our life in the viewpoint of the one who sits on the judgment seat the white throne judgment where with the heaven and the earth and the sea has been fled away he is truth Living or residing in lies, we cannot say we are walking in truth. Dear brethren, we are called to become learning, growing, mature believers, not just to use the life to die like an immature child. But we are called to grow up to the adult sons, conforming to the image of Christ, walking and executing the will of God the Father according to His will. Dear brethren, life is too short, and the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. And which way you want to go, you decide because it's your life. And we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. So dear brethren, with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you be my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believing Christ we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest must grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. By with you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn the gun. Herald the word in season, out of season, because the diamonds my witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamonds my witnesses in the Trinity, follow the Bible in our hands. And number two diamonds my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire and the recourse will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to learn and to understand that we have to show pity as David showed pity upon Saul, comparing that Saul to be Satan and David to be the church age 
or in more clear the human race, particularly in this church age, given this privilege under the Kainiketesis, to reach the standards of spiritual fatherhood so that we could overcome and know that we have peace with God by enjoying the peace of God, the strength of God who is, and not brooding over the past but looking into the future to have an abundant life, not only on this earth as we enjoy day by day in the fellowship, but also in the things to come in the heaven. So, Father, help us to witness thy word, to teach thy truth, nothing else, because there is nothing of a business of more important for us on this earth than to pull as many as we can from the clutches of Satan and make them to be free from the fire and make them to understand particularly to the group of the believers to reach the full epinosis knowledge according to the truth. So, Father, as we march ahead as Father in your grace, which are bestowed upon us to enlighten our eyes, to open up our blind eyes, to realize the truth. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to fulfill thy desire through our lives, and nothing else than that, as we pilgrimage on this earth. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father, because nothing we require on this earth apart from your grace, 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 amazing grace, which are bestowed upon us, to the praise of your glory in your grace. In Christ's much less pure, less gracious name we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us through this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.